I believe everyone's had a great opportunity here over the last 12, maybe 14 months to see Case IH's new AF series of combines. At the Farm Progress Show, as you can see right here in this video clip, it was just a really popular thing to see. And as most of you know, there were several of these around last year. We had the opportunity uh, to get in the cab and, and test it and talk to some farmers and actually a fifth generation Case IH dealership. There's some other YouTube videos here uh, in my channel you can go watch. But I wanted to follow up and the guys at Central Illinois Ag had the opportunity here in Illinois to get one out early this fall. And I had a chance to jump in the cab with Jacob Wade. And the Wade Farms, uh, they have a narrow row corn operation, corn and soybeans. And Jacob and I have gone back years and years and years. He's always testing stuff. And he was pretty excited to get this combine back on his farm this year. They run a pair of 8260s. And it won't be long before they make a push to this higher capacity machine. But one of the things that Jacob and I always kind of laugh about in, in the world of machinery is, you know, is this something that's going to be around for a long time? And I kind of coined the phrase, is this a generational combine? Because, you know, I was a little guy and remember when we first got our axle flow in 78. And I remember those days. And Jacob makes reference to when the 8000 series came out. But anyway, Jacob and I had a great conversation in a cab here. And I'll let you take a listen to it. Doesn't this seem like a, like a generational combine? Like what you got here is what you and I are gonna laugh about the next 10 or 15 years. As far as linking and capacity and all that stuff. This is, this is definitely a generational combine. This is a way better version of when the 8010 first came out comparing it to a 2380. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. They tried to sell us that you could replace one eighty ten with two twenty three eighty eights. We knew that wasn't true. They did have some problems in the beginning with eighty ten. Once they got down to where they're at now, they can do thirty eight and forty and beyond. And those machines have been running really good for the last couple of years. And that's what you've got. You got a pair of Yep. And so my goal with this would be that we're not gonna do a two for one, but if I can do one point five to one point six more and just have one operator. Health is a big thing on our farm right now. It's it's hard to get reliable, good health. And so if we could have one less person needed and have at least the same output or close to a day, that is that's what we're at. And don't you think this combine too, I think in the economy of equipment for it, you're not looking at this combine rolling every year. This is a three or four year, right? Because this is almost half year. Yeah, you're not gonna We've all learned that from the big carbines here, you, you can't just split them every year. There's not a market for them. You have to hold on to them for a couple of years. And so what I really hope to see happen is that the manufacturers start to say, okay, we're gonna stand behind the three for a five year warranty, right? and you can feel comfortable about owning this machine and running it for that moment, right? Oh, I think that makes a lot of sense. And you know, you and I were talking the other day, you know, maybe instead of a pair of new 8260s, Maybe you got a nice, decent used combine that sits back there. That's your two or three hundred hour a year combine machine for soybeans. Yep. You know, and and the, and the big fear has always been that we run two and one goes down. You're still running one. Even if you still add one of those older combines, you can still switch it over and run it. The hydraulics are the same. The electronics are the same. There's a, a little bit of difference with the the lock. That on this format, it only takes us an hour to flip over between the 8260 and the AFC. Changing shafts and doing all Yeah, there's one shaft we've got to change. It's, it's not a big deal. And that's, that the comparison to what some of the other companies have done, Case Mint, it was right there, and they didn't make it, so I had to go by a completely different head. Well, the other thing I think, too, that it's really nice, we can't understate it, and if you, I hate to say it, but you can almost put anybody in here. I mean, they got to know what they're doing. But as far as worrying about the combine being set, the automation works fantastic. I mean, you got to push these machines for big, right? To get the capacity. But they just work. You're not you're not adjusting it all day long, and I can't under understate that. The automation on this AF10 has really been taken to the next level. I, in the past, with their 8250s and 8260s, I have not consistently been able to trust the automation just because I'm an experienced operator I can outguess it 
I kind of like the automation on those in soybeans, not so much you can. Is that yes. what you can say when you get here? Yeah, yes. and especially yeah. wet corn automation struggles. Yeah. But with everything I've seen from this, I don't even try to outguess this combine. It's doing a better job than I can. And the sample is just beautiful every single time. And I, you know, this year not so much, because this corn is what? How much is this corn? This is 19, yeah. yeah. But last year, I remember the first corn you had the memo in, it was a, a red combine that worked great in wet corn. Like, thank you. Like, it worked so good. Like, yep. You didn't have any cob. You didn't it was just it was nice. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm also going to be posting a video here very soon with a conversation with Michael Schmidt. He had another AF10 out, and that's actually his combine. And we'll share that video here, too, in the next few days. Hope you guys are having a great, safe harvest. Thanks for watching this video, and as always, God bless.